Hi, my name is Gohar Ali. Welcome back to my channel, Whispers of Ultrasound. There is a Chinese proverb that a journey of thousand miles start with a single step. Let's take our first step towards this journey of learning how these ultrasound waves display their miracles and understand whispers and secrets of these ultrasound waves. Uh, today we will discuss some basics and fundamental concepts of ultrasound physics and on these basics and simple concepts we will try to build up uh, the uh, uh, the strong foundation of ultrasound physics and without understanding these basic concepts we will not be able to understand physics soundly and perfectly and uh, uh, here I want to mention that uh, description of sound waves uh, is incomplete without mentioning music. Music is a melodious sound and that has seven uh, elements and it, it has a strong power to express uh, emotions and feelings. So whenever you uh, uh, are in the middle of something uh, that bothers you or you are stuck with something so go and listen to the music it will bring catharsis and it will set a new spirit inside you so in this uh, in these slides we will discuss the basic definition of sound and ultrasound uses of ultrasound waves uh, production of sound waves, how, product, how sound is produced and uh, how do we listen these sounds and uh, in the last we will discuss acoustic variables. So sound and ultrasound waves, uh, sounds and ultrasound waves uh, by definition and by their characteristics they are the twin sisters. They are very similar to each other and uh, <clears throat> uh, in all aspects except frequency. So the difference between sound and ultrasound waves is, is the frequency. Ultrasound waves have high frequency, high frequency waves and that high frequency make them inaudible and invisible and thanks to ultrasound physics that uh, these uh, inaudible and uh, invisible ultrasound become visible uh, through ultrasound uh, machine. So human uh, the basic uh, human range of uh, the frequency of the human range of a common ears is between 20 to 20,000 hertz. And any frequency below then this uh, 20 hertz is called infrasound or uh, infrasonic waves. And anything that is uh, any wave that is uh, that has the frequency above than 20 hertz is called. Uh, uh, ultrasound waves. So what is Hertz? Hertz is a cycle per second. This is one cycle of a wave. This this represents one cycle. And if you allow this one, uh, this cycle to move through or move across this specific point, in one second, frequency is called one cycle per second, or it is all it is also known as hertz. After the name of the scientist who developed uh, this definition, so on the basis of uh, ultrasound uh, uh, frequency, the the frequency of the sound waves, you can divide sound into two categories audible sound and inaudible sound our ultrasound waves are inaudible sound while the sounds are normal ordinary sounds are uh, um, are the audible sounds and their frequency lies between this range 20 and 20000 hertz so we discuss uh, let me erase uh, it first and uh, Let's move towards the, so these are the, 
the two categories of uh, uh, waves audible sounds and inaudible sound and the major difference between is the high frequency and high frequency make them inaudible and invisible so animal has been using ultrasound waves long before humans started using them for their different purposes animals like dog elephant bats dolphins in 1906, uh, uh, a Navy personnel, uh, Lewis Nixon, developed a system known as Sonar Sound Navigation and Ranging System with which uh, the uh, location of the submarines and obstacle under the, uh, under the water could be detected. And the importance of the sonar become very evident uh, after the tragic uh, incidents of sinking of uh, Titanic uh, in 1912. And since then, there were uh, development in this system. And today, we are using sonar as uh, um, uh, oceanography. And we use it uh, for uh, detection of the depth of the sea uh, obstacles and uh, detection of submarines, detection of uh, icebergs, and a lot of other purposes. So the first user of ultrasounds were uh, the animals on this planet, were uh, orcas, dolphins, and uh, cat, dogs, and... In this slide, we will discuss the production of the sound and how, how do we hear the sound. So three things are... Uh, necessary for the production of the sound number one there should be a source source mean a vibrating source a vibrating source can produce a sound and when sound is produced that needs a medium to travel and without medium it cannot travel from one place to the other place from one uh, from the lips to the ear that's why we cannot uh, hear sound on the surface of the moon because there is no medium and from medium we mean gas liquid or solid and third when sound is produced and when medium is available then there should be a receiver if there is a source there is a medium but there is no listener or there is no receiver we cannot hear the sound so sounds are the compressional waves pressure waves and they are longitudinal waves so longitudinal waves means that uh, they travel in a straight line and uh, and they need a medium to travel and compressional waves that they produce an uh, area of compression and rarefaction. Suppose we have a vibrating source here and suppose this is a speaker. So diaphragm of the speaker move right and left it vibrates between two positions right and left and when the diaph and uh, when vibration takes place we hear the sound so when diaphragm of the uh, speaker moves right it compresses the molecules of the air and molecules of the air come very close to each other And when diaphragm moves away or towards the left, this pressure is reduced and the molecules become a little bit apart from each other. In this way, the two areas are produced or two zones are produced, the area of high pressure and density and area of low pressure and density. Area of high pressure and density is called compression and area of low pressure and density is called rarefaction. So why do they call compression and rarefaction? How the pressure and density changes? If you zoom out this area, in this area, there are num more number of molecules. Because 
because of the compression and uh, what are the molecules molecules are the mass and mass per volume is called density when there is a concentration of more molecules we say that the density the the, the area is more dense and uh, if there is and if i zoom out this area this area contains less molecules so we can say that there is concentration of uh, uh, less concentration of the molecules and uh, there is a uh, the density is uh, low as compared to this one and when the molecules of uh, uh, of the medium come close to each each other the force of attraction between these molecules become high and they more exert more pressure on unit area and we say that the pressure increases and we have already discussed that the concentration of the molecule is also increases so the uh, so in this way the area of high pressure and density is produced and that is called compression while rarefaction the area of rarefaction is inverse or opposite to the area of compression where where there is low concentration of uh, uh, molecules and low uh, and this is the area of low pressure and low density when these compression and rarefaction reaches to a receiver that is in this case that is our ear and this compression and rarefaction reaches while moving through a medium so two conditions are fulfilled number one source number two medium number three a receiver and uh, when these compression and rarefactions uh, vibrate the eardrum of our ear we hear the sound and when these compression and rarefactions uh, move across a medium the particles of the medium move back and forth there is a periodic oscillation between two extreme position and uh, you can say that uh, that when a sound wave moves in a medium it has some specific effect on the medium number one it raises the pressure of the medium it raises the density of the medium and it makes the movement of the particles to and fro or it makes the periodic oscillation of the particles of the medium so these these three changes that a sound waves bring into the medium is called acoustic variable and we will discuss in the coming slides so as a final definition of the uh, ultrasound waves uh, that uh, these waves uh, are uh, mechanical longitudinal waves because mechanical uh, mechanical longitudinal wave means that they travel in a straight line and uh, let me make it straight straight line and they need a medium and they make area of compression and rarefaction this is the area of compression and this is area of rarefaction and uh, compression is also called crust peak and area of rarefaction is also called trough or valley so now we, uh, when we are clear with this concept that uh, ultrasounds are the waves so anything that uh, transfer energy from one place to the other place is called uh, a wave so if we call sound and ultrasound as a wave then the question is what kind of energy they uh, they transfer from one location to the other location and that energy is a uh, pressure energy that's why ultrasound waves are called pressure waves 
so each and every phrase in the definition of the uh, of ultrasound wave uh, has its meaning like uh, mechanical longitudinal they travel in a straight line and then in medium and they produce area of compression and rarefaction and they transfer energy from one place to the other place so this is the final definition of the ultrasound waves and don't uh, forget that the uh, that uh, particles of the medium oscillate back and forth when a wave passes along a medium and they do not and they do not uh, uh, leave their place from one location to the other location As far as uh, the definition of the pressure uh, uh, of these acoustic variables uh, is concerned, pressure is force per unit area and uh, density is the concentration of the matter. Matter mean solid, liquid or gas. Mass per volume and its units are gram per milliliter. So, concentration of the matter you saw that in area of compression uh, the molecules of the of the medium come very close to each other and the concentration of the mass increases in that area while it is opposite in um, uh, rarefaction uh, in rarefaction there the molecules are far apart and there is a less concentration of the molecules in unit area and uh, the density is low so third one is the particle vibration or particle motion and uh, some people exclude uh, include sorry uh, temperature in acoustic variable since in uh, in uh, case of human human tissues uh, it is considered that the that uh, the pressure remains constant of the human tissue when a sound wave passes through the uh, through these tissues so this uh, variable is insignificant and some people do not uh, include temperature uh, as acoustic variable so this is all for today folks uh, see you in the next video uh, thank you very much for watching this video please like and subscribe my channel ultrasound whisper to learn together <laughs>